What's up, everybody? Welcome back to more Black Myth Wukong. My name is Raven from. What should I do? I'm caught in a tight spot. What's in here? Are you the fourth chief? Caught in a tight spot. He's probably the fourth chief. Come closer and feel. Noble blood doesn't prey on travelers like you. Oh, he's friendly. He's friendly. Uh, you don't look like a Yagwai from these parts. Uh, have you come to earn the Blackwind King's favor? Oh, he's a horse. Uh, hear me. That bear is but a hollow shell. He can grant you nothing. Don't waste your time on him. He lies about cheating death and even the treasures. His followers are, all of them, deceived. Blackwind Gwai is a sly one. He preaches virtue with a heart full of greed. Oh, I wouldn't entrust him with my plea. I don't know why you are here, but you should be vigilant. Now I'm pressed for time. Fare thee well, then. Okay, so we just talked to the horse. What you got in here? Anything? Yeah, any treasure or anything? I don't know why you are here. Now I'm pressed for time. Okay. Oh. Increased maximum health. This game is absolutely beautiful. All right. All right, so let's keep on keeping on. What is that? Oh! <laughs> oh, see ya, two piece. I think we're the, the original. He said the monkey is back. We're completely new. Another guardian. Who are you to trouble this grand mountain? See ya. Pressing forward. He goes, can he swim though? How do I? I'm gonna answer my well, it's not even deep. <laughs> 
I was afraid it was deep, but that just answers my question. It's not. This comes out over here. I don't even know where I'm going. There's no map. Oh, hold up. I'm going the right way. I'm going the right way, dude. There's the, the there's the GPS. What if I choose to go here? Okay. Good thing I did choose to go over here. Pellets, longevity. What's that do? It says, upon use, considerably increases maximum health for a long duration. Tigers are doing pellets. Need some of them at the store. They don't, they don't sell them tiger pellets and all that other junk. Not to say they won't. Another crow. Yeah. Crow. Oh. All right. So do I keep going up the mountain? over here anything a little wheel nope keep on keeping on up and down by worldly cage now free in nature's sage what Like snakes. Hmm. I need... <laughs> Have you seen those nameless souls adrift on your path? Their wheels float aloft, never to fade. Shame, your god serves little purpose, and mine answers solely to me. Hmm. I know a way to guide the souls, mend their paths, and set them free. It will aid you. Now, this is better. This gourd, though humble, May save the lost, banish their obsessions, and guide them. Under the guidance of a wise master, the destined one has mastered the art of spirit absorption. The gourd possesses remarkable divine capabilities, allowing it to absorb the lingering wheels of spirits left behind by formidable Yaguais who have been defeated. Oh, great. For one as destined as you, there can be no turning back. We are like tumbleweeds, drifting through life with a destiny beyond our grasp. Ah, we must be like the tumbleweed. Why I recorded. 
snake patroller. A season's turn from slumber it parts, hidden in green, a hunter with arts. Small in shape, it devours the grand, or strikes a pain no cure can stand. Ah, uh, in the kingdom of Hami, a small city stood against the mountainside, its lush grasses and dense forests, a haven for serpents. Much, much to the town folk's constant dismay. <laughs> of course, there lived. Let me see. There lived in this city a snake hunter, masterful in his craft, who had freed the people from many a serpent's threat, earning a fair share of silver in the process. He boasted not of his wealth. Instead, he often dispensed porridge, porridge to the needy, and prayed for all. So revered he was that the magistrate. He that the magistrate awarded him a dwelling for all his family to live in within the town walls. One day, a ragged monk, seemingly delusional, came begging at his door. The snake hunter's kind-hearted wife offered clothes and food, but the monk, unsatisfied, demanded liquor. The crowd scorned his impudence, their complaints growing loud until the snake hunter's return. He silenced the clamor and instructed his wife to bring the monk a gourd of spirits. Touched by the jester, the monk warned, A serpent guai lurks in your home. Ignore it not, or your family shall perish. Oh my God. The snake hunter scoffed at at such mad ramblings and dismissed him promptly. Yet his wife heeded the monk's words and urged her husband to search for the guai. He, however, brushed aside her concerns. In her persistence, the wife fetched the mad monk once more to banish the evil. Indeed, with raw meat and an iron hook, the monk drew <laughs> the monk drew from their home a massive serpent, taller than a man, clearly a creature of power. Four limbs it sprouts, and venom deadly. The monk declared, a mere touch is death. With those words, he slew the serpent guide from the, for the woman. Strangely thence, the town remained untouched by further snake scourges, as if by the mad monk's hand peace was restored. So is he the mad monk, or is he the, the, the snake hunter? I mean, I, that's... This is the thing he slayed, but I mean, the guy who just... Who gave us the gourd... Is he the, uh, huh? This guy here, where'd he go? This guy here, is he the snake hunter? Or is he the, the, uh, Was he the fool, the, the 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 delusional monk or whatever? I wonder. It makes you wonder. <laughs> or is this just the story behind? It just so happens to be the story behind the enemy we just defeated. Because we didn't get no backstory on him. But I mean, he's Gord is something you drink out of. So that's what why I thought he he may have been like that the, the alcoholic. But I guess not. I don't know. Skeletal snake, a noble fate's vengeful, vengeful breath, binds the bones of snakes in death. A soul mistreated here to stay, resentful will blown away, blown, blown astray. In the village of shaded heights, there lived a young man, orphaned and impoverished, constantly mistreated by his fellow villagers. Oops, sorry about that. One day, hunters from the village discovered a strange cave in the mountains, emitting eerie sounds that sent shivers down their spines. Too afraid to enter themselves, villagers pushed the young man into the in to investigate. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> they pushed him in. That sounds like something you'd see in like a, 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 a coming-of-age thriller. I don't know if you guys remember that, that movie, Stand By Me. 
That's something you'd see them do that, so, like, like in that, something like that. <laughs> Lost in the darkness, he stumbled and fell from a cliff, crying out in agony, but leaving the cave harbored a fearsome guai. The villagers abandoned him and fled in terror. Sitting at the bottom, the young man wept bitterly. Amidst his tears, he heard the sound of bones snapping and rustling of movement. Startled, he fell silent, only hear footsteps approaching. Filled with fear, he yelled, Stay away! I am an orphan and burdened with misery. My flesh is lean. Feasting on me won't do you any good. Surprisingly, as soon as he spoke, the footsteps stopped. Time passed, and within the darkness, hunger gnawed at the man's senses. Despairingly, he pleaded, There is no one coming for me. Devour me quickly so I may have a merciful death. Then the footsteps resumed. Inching closer, terrified, he assumed his end was imminent. Yet, to his astonishment, he felt a piece of cloth gently brush against his face. Reaching out, he realized it was a sleeve, which he grasped, firm, grasped firmly. The sleeve guided him to stand and led him through the darkness until they found the cave's entrance. As the daylight bathed them, the young man finally saw what had been guiding him, a skeletal serpent. Gwai! Seeing the young man startled, the Gwai suddenly extended his neck and swept him out of the cave. Afterwards, the young man was saved by passing merchants and departed from the village with them. From then on, his life gradually improved and prospered. As the saying goes, misfortune may be the harbinger of fortune. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? And fortune may conceal misfortune. Uh-huh. This is a great game. These ancient sayings are true, though. While not an absolute truth. Right. But I just said it was true, but I, he said it's not absolute, which is that's also true. When events reach their peak, change becomes inevitable. That's true, though. From change, opportunities arise, and the lowest valleys often reveal the clearest paths. Oh my God, that's a really good. That's a good. This is a great story behind this character, but that's also a great piece of advice at the end here. I almost feel bad facing the dog. One thing. He helped the villager. <laughs> and, okay. It may have it may not have been that specific one. I mean, come on now. But still. I almost feel bad facing him and defeating him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I mean he helped them. The reason I say that is because if the snake wanted to devour him, he could have. The guy was weak, emaciated, and dying of hunger and thirst. It was like he couldn't fight back if he wanted to. He was so weak. So it's like if he wanted to devour him, he could have. See ya. I wouldn't want to be ya. You know what I feel like? I feel like there's like a a boss, a boss snake lingering around somewhere. It, it seems like <laughs> in games like this and RPGs, it almost always is, especially in like JRPGs. It seems like there's always like a huge, like if there's imps roaming around, there's like an imp boss, like in like in, in, stuff like. Even in Metroidvania, it's like Castlevania. I feel like there's always like some boss version of that lesser demon. If that makes any sense. I mean, if it, may, it, it makes perfect sense, but it almost always is. It may not always be, but it almost. A uh, good, like, 70% of the, the time. In uh, games like this, like a JRPG or uh, even a regular RPG. It doesn't have to be just JRPG. Oh, you can't cheat. 
Okay. I tried to hit him while he was getting up. I don't know why. It's like, oh, well, you can't cheat and you gotta give him a chance to. It's like, no, I ain't giving him a chance to do anything. Well, I'm supposed to give him a chance to kill me? Hey, look at that. You should be able to. Uh uh. Shoot, scar him, let you knock him. <laughs> Smack him into, into a pile of bones while they're rising. Shoot, you ain't no great. Like you giving him a grace period. The, the fudge? How do they get a grace? We don't get no grace period. <laughs> I had a feeling too. I had a feeling. Uh, let me. I think I do. That helps with poison. My bones. Thing is, they're not that difficult to defeat. Hey. I didn't even realize that was weird death. Put yourself down. I don't even know which way which way to go. I need my little GPS firefly to come back. Surrounded by these bone characters. Do this. They're not easy to defeat, but see, there's strength in numbers. You almost had me. I'm not paying attention. I think that was the only one I had. I wasn't the only one. I need to get to a, a shrine to. Is this even the right way to go? Oh! I'm sick of it. Oh my god, we've been tricked again. Definitely don't want to be hit by this. Huh? Don't want to be hit by this thing. I feel like we'll be poisoned all over me. Snake head mushroom. And yeah, what are you? Fungling. Fungling. All right. As mountain rains kiss the ground. Youthful green is all around. In her virtues quiet display, even guys in the woods repay. <laughs> really? In the highlight bounds there lived in the highlight bounds there lived a widow and her girl. Left to fend against the harsh days alone. The mother sold pancakes in the nearby village. The girl gathered firewood around grain. Firewood ground grain, excuse me. And cooked meals, shouldering her share of the family's responsibility. Ceaseless rains had worn down the woodshed. Long neglected without a man's hand, the beams rotted and the roof caved in. All right. One day, the girl found atop the ruins a gleaming mushroom, vibrant and capped like a bowl, dew dancing on its surface. A spark of life too precious to pluck. She sheltered it with straw, letting it thrive in peace. Laden with tasks, the girl had no time to play with other children. All her secrets and dreams she whispered to the mushroom, as if it was a dear friend. The toys of life led the widow into illness, urgently needing money for medicine. After discussing it, the widow 
and her daughter decided to sell their house. A wealthy neighbor who had once been a cl- who, uh, who had once been close to the widow's late husband expressed interest in buying the house. However, this neighbor was very stingy and tried to exploit the widow's illness to lower the price. They spread various rumors to scare away other potential buyers, bullying the helpless willow, widow and her daughter. Oh, my. Worried and anxious, the girl often hid in the woodshed to cry. The mushrooms witnessed all her grievances. The next day, something strange happened at the neighbor's house. <clears throat> Overnight, mushrooms had sprouted all over her, their property. When the neighbors ordered their servants to clear them away, they discovered a large, eerie mushroom about a foot tall, neither green nor yellow, growing on the main beam. When they tried to cut down the mushroom with the long-handed, with long-handed sickles, it suddenly rose into the air, opened its cap like a fishing net, and floated above them. It shook itself and then fell onto the man of the house. Crushing him to death, the air was filled with countless spores. The creatures released, knocking everyone to the ground. Oh, after the mushroom crawled out of the ground, transforming into many guais, they helped the widow and her daughter pack their belongings and leave the village, disappearing into the mountains. Wow. That's a man, that's a good little short story. Shoot, that's what I was talking about. I love these stories. First, I was, I kind of like skimmed through them the first episode. Like I was, I'm not, if I'm going too fast, just pause the video. But I want to read them now. Shoot, that's really good. So that's the story behind those mushroom men. They started with that little girl, and and her mom. A sick mom. I don't know which way to go. Do I go this way? Do I go this way? Do they both lead to the same? Uh oh, oh god. This humble one's name is Guangmo. Should my demise come by your hands, please pass this message to my master. Searching for deity, mortals do aspire. Craving immortality. Yao Guai's surely will conspire. <laughs> All's in vain. Save your own effort. Funny, I forgot your name just that fast. <laughs> what did he say his name was? Guangmo? Oh, <laughs> 
Elder Jincha to burn the great sage and tongue monk alive. That's these two. I thought they were already turned into ashes by that fire. Who would have thought they had turned into Yaoguais? Guangma. It is. He's not, you know what? He wasn't that bad. <laughs> it was when he summons those poison snake spirits. They can really drain your health. But it seems like all you have to do is defeat one and they all disappear. I'm so glad it's like that. Yeah, I'll go at you. Guanmo. I bet you that freaking uh, white is, is the other one. With the monk's facade, but a serpent's heart. He wields deceit, playing many parts. His desires shift, insatiably pursued. Faithless to his master, all teachings he achieved. Guangmo, the great tactician, t tactician, was not like his senior fellow people. Guanzai, from a young age, from a young age, his heart yearned to be legendary Yaguai master, remembered for ages. But fate had other plans. When the old Lingzui, Lingzui sent his beloved disciple to Guanyin Temple to be a monk. Old White Snake Guai grew worried. The snake feared it would it was old Ling Guai's ploy to win favor with the black bear Guai and command Guang Mao to join the monkhood as well. Before he left, the snake warned him, never fall behind, least of all behind Guang Zai. But no matter how hard Guang Mao tried, oh the Jinchi never seemed to favor him as much as Guang Zai, even when he learned faster and trained harder. Guang Mao consoled himself, believing his stem not from his own failings, but from the snake's ham-fisted meddling, which had turned the elders against him. He found solace in the notion of returning to the mountains one day, when he could embrace his Yaogwai nature, unshackled by such trivial concerns. Guang Mao can still recall Jin Chi's teachings. You can be too extreme, too uncompromising, always leave some room and some things unfinished. But the day Jin Chi saw the Kasai of Eversparks, he decided so intensely that he forgot his own words and kept long into the night. Guang Mao saw the thought taking root in the old monk's heart to kill for his, his prize. Everyone shield, shied away from the idea, but Guang Zai boldly spoke the truth. Guang Mao seethed with inexplic inexplicable rage. In his mind, a scheme within a scheme began to take shape. As Elder Jinchi drank tea with the two monks, Guang Mao glimpsed an untamed malice in the monkey's eyes. A hunger for vengeance. Building on Guang Zai's gambit, Guang Mao goaded and prodded, weaving a merciless plot that left no room for escape. The old monk was delighted, and for the first time he acknowledged Guang Mao's wit. With his plan set, Guang Mao knew that doom would strike that night, summoning a gust of wind he hid in the bamboo grove behind the mountain. As anticipated, a great fire broke out that night, but it failed to kill the two journeying monks as intended. Instead, it burned the entire temple to the ground. Alas, the world harbors such petty souls, capable of ensnaring the lofty and vanquishing them with cunning plots. Perhaps this is what is meant by slaying with a barreled blade. All right, you got any secrets over here, bud? Freaking secret items. Which way did I come? I came through the rock that way. So we either just keep going up this way. Or because there was another, or do I? Either way would have led here, right? Okay, so this is the right way to go. But if I go up here, what is up here? Ah. the bell again.
Is he gonna come? Do you have to keep doing that? <laughs> got pissed last time we did that. It's like, man, everybody's gonna know you're here now. I have an ominous feeling. After the bell rang, it seems as though the resentment in the depths of the mountain has grown. Ah, oh, forget it. Overthinking won't help. Your presence has already made a mess in the mountain. Why not go ahead and take them out once and for all? Hmm, why not? find another temple that's pretty far oh, there we go there we go I can see fragrant vine Cultivate spirits. Take form of when I call forth snakes to spit venom upon foes. <laughs> Moderately increases poison damage and poison resistance. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to stop it here every day. Thanks for watching. My name is Raven from the Sky. If you enjoyed the episode, drop a like and subscribe to the channel series grow. Take care. And I'm going to catch you guys in the next episode. Peace out.